We're back. It's about time. Graduate school's awesome. Today we're going to speed run the law of large numbers in the central limit theorem. Let's get started. All right, we're going to import matplotlib.pyplot as plt, import numpy as mp, and then we're also going to import scipy. Let's simulate some uniform random variables. I'm going to say u is equal to mp.random.uniform. Uh, in this case, we are going to parameterize this function by a low and a high, lower bound, upper bound. Uh, it is a continuous distribution, just like the normal distribution. Uh, that is, there is an even probability of selecting any value between this range that we give it. We're going to give it 0 and 1, where each individual number has a 0 probability of being selected. We're going to print this draw, and you'll see we're going to get, again, with equal probability, random number between 0 and 1. It's the so-called standard uniform random variable. You can also visualize this. Instead of simulating just one, I can also simulate 10,000. This is going to make you a vector of standard uniform random variables. If I plot this, we can say plt hist u, set bins to say 20 or so, run this, and you can see we get a pretty much a horizontal line between zero and one. That is the, the unit interval here. Uh, and everything has an equal probability of being selected. That is why it's a, a flat line, okay? So that's a uniform random variable, specifically standard uniform. Uh, and in this case, we're generating 10,000 of those guys. What about a normal? N is equal to mp.random.normal. Instead of a lower and an upper bound, here we give a mean and standard deviation. So zero is gonna be the mean, one is gonna be the standard deviation. In this case, we're not bound by these numbers. This is not generating numbers between zero and one. This is going to generate numbers such that the mean is zero and the standard deviation is gonna be one. So if I run this, you'll see I get 0.8, negative 0.3, so on and so forth. And if I was to do this, say 10,000 times, and I was to plot this distribution, say bins is equal to 20 again, we get the bell curve that we are hopefully all familiar with. If not, welcome, bell curve. Uh, and we can even generate a nice plot, maybe a nicer looking plot if we use Seaborn. We can use a KDE plot. And we get something that looks like this, right? It's a pretty looking bell curve, okay? Maybe if I make this even bigger, it'll be even prettier. Nah, you get the idea right? We like the bell curve. We like normal distributions. We know a lot about the normal distribution. We know that 68%, approximately 68% of the data is going to fall between plus or minus one standard deviation away from the mean. In this case, the center mean zero, right? Standard normal. Uh, the standard deviation is one. So 68% of the data is going to fall between plus or minus one, uh, and then so on and so forth. That's the empirical rule, right? We can also conduct statistical tests, using this distribution, Z tests, the T distribution will converge uh, to a normal distribution, but we're getting ahead of ourselves here, okay? Uh, in general, I just wanted to show you uniform and normal distribution simulation, or random variable simulation, right? We're drawing from those predefined, predetermined distributions. Not gonna get into the mumbo jumbo with the probability density function, the cumulative distribution function. Instead, we're gonna talk about the implication and intuition of the law of large numbers, okay? So this is the sample average, all right? That is the sample average. It's literally taking an average. We all know how to take an average, or you know, I hope we do. I probably wouldn't be watching this video if you didn't. Um, this is how we take an average. N is the total number of values in our sample. So if we were to take the average of these 10,000 normal samples, uh, we would do one over N and we would sum all of them up uh, so essentially it would be one over 10,000 and then we would sum everything up. So if I was to print the mean of n, what would we expect it to be? Expectation, mean, what would we expect it to be? Well, hopefully if we're simulating this variable correctly, it's gonna be close to zero. And lo and behold it is, okay? So it is in fact close to zero. Right? If we keep simulating these, we're gonna get different means, right? Because we're creating 10,000 different random variables. But you'll notice 
something very similar about all of these draws. They're all close to zero. The law of large numbers essentially formalizes this. It's saying the limit as n approaches infinity, that is the sample size n of 10,000 approaches infinity, less the true population mean, which we may or may not know, in this case we know it's zero, is going to be bound by some arbitrary positive epsilon. All right, if you remember your delta epsilon proofs from calculus, your nightmare is not over, all right? This is an arbitrary positive epsilon, that is for any positive epsilon, Okay, epsilon representing a distance between the true population mean and the sample mean. We say in probability that this is going to be essentially certain. Okay, wow, essentially certain. Okay, how can we kind of make this a little more concrete? Well, what I'm gonna do is essentially what I did here, but I'm going to simulate it 1000 times and pick an arbitrary epsilon. So I'm gonna say epsilon is equal to 0.01, again, representing an arbitrary distance between the sample average as n approaches infinity and the true average x we're going to say l is equal to an empty list and i'm going to simulate 1000 x bar n's so i'm going to say 4i in range 1000 again this is just an arbitrary number i could choose 100 i could choose 10,000. doesn't matter i'm saying 1000 we're going to say n is equal to mp dot random dot normal zero one i'm going to start with 10 okay nowhere near infinity all right we're generating 10 draws from a standard normal distribution i can find x bar n to be the mean of n and then if i wanted to in probability determine what this value is then all i would have to do is check subtract the true mean in this case it's zero so we're left with the same expression i just need the distance so i'm going to say if mp dot absolute x bar n is less than epsilon l dot append one otherwise it's not true we're going to append zero then to get the expression in probability i'm going to sum l and divide by the length of l okay so if this expression is true as n approaches infinity we should be bound by some arbitrarily posit arbitrary positive epsilon. Okay, in this case, x is epsilon to be 0.01. Of course, we can't have infinity. In this case, n is 10. It is not infinity. Okay, it is not infinity. n is 10. So if I run this, right, we get 0.021. It's not close to 1, right? But 10 is not close to infinity. If I make this 100, 0.091, make this 500. Okay, 5,000, it's pretty good. 10,000, it's getting there. 50,000, 0.98, 100,000. Hopefully this is illustrating my point for some arbitrarily, arbitrary positive epsilon. As n approaches infinity in probability, we are certain that this difference is going to be bound by that epsilon uh, and it's going to be the case with 100% probability. Okay, this is the intuition slash simulation, uh, essentially, of this law of large numbers. We are literally computing this probability right here. That's what we're doing right here. Okay, we are finding x bar n, we're determining if it's less than epsilon, and then we are creating this essentially indicator function here, which is 1. If that's the case, zero if it's not, and then just computing the raw probability. And we can see as n becomes arbitrarily large, this approaches one. That is the law of large numbers. Central limit theorem, what is it? All right, x bar n, that is a statistic, right? Statistics in randomness follow their own distribution. When we have a realization, of course, the value is known. So when I have these 100,000 draws from a normal distribution and I compute x bar n, then it's not an unknown quantity, right? But we do this a thousand times, right? The x bar n distribution is going to be governed by something. What is it going to be, right? Do we expect it to follow its original distribution, right? So if I create a distribution of the sample uniform means, 
is that going to be uniform itself? This is the, the bananas thing about the central limit theorem here. With sufficient n, the sampling distribution, that is the distribution of sample means, is going to be normal. <laughs> That's, that is bananas. And it turns out that it doesn't matter what the governing distribution is. It could be uniform, it could be normal, hell, it could be Poisson for all we care. But the distribution of sample means, that is every time we create a sample, take the mean, create a sample, take the mean, that distribution of means is always going to be normal. That's bananas. Let's take a look at what this actually looks like. If I say for I in range 1000, we're going to say u is equal to np.random.uniform. This is the so-called standard uniform distribution. We're going to create 10,000 draws from this and we're going to get our uh, x bar n. In this case, it's going to be the mean of u. Okay. I'm going to create a vector of u bars. Okay. This is going to allow us to create a distribution of sample means, specifically 1000 sample means. We're going to say u bars dot append, and we're going to append x bar n. Okay. So what do we get as a result of this? All right. If I run this, of course, helps to run your cells. If I run this, I get a vector of u bars. All right. This is nothing particularly crazy, right? We're just saying we're going to do this a thousand times. We're going to generate 10,000 draws from a uniform distribution, zero to one standard uniform distribution. We're going to take the mean that's X bar N and we're going to add it to this vector uh, U bars. And all of these guys are essentially sample averages. Now, what do we expect this distribution to look like? Maybe intuitively you would expect it to also follow a uniform distribution, but it doesn't. It follows a normal distribution. That is absolutely bananas. PLT.hist U bars bins is equal to 20. Bananas. Bananas, this is a uniform random variable. That is crazy. Absolutely bonkers. And if we were to do this for something else, if we did this for a normal distribution, 0, 1, 10,000, same thing. It's normal. What about Poisson? Poisson, 0 to 10,000, we'll make this 10. Run this. Normal is absolutely bonkers okay this is the central limit theorem in action here all right why is this helpful okay i'm going absolutely crazy over here and most statistics students are going to be slamming their head against the wall because they're like okay that's that's nice and dandy but how is this helpful how is the law how is this expression helpful how is this how is knowledge of this helpful how is knowledge of the distribution of sampling means being approximately normal helpful here is an example of how it's helpful. Okay. I have a training strategy. All right. And I know that if I go long, all the stocks in the top quantile and short, all the stocks in the bottom quantile of sentiment based on my own proprietary sentiment measure, then I'm going to be profitable based on my back tests, based on my paper trading, I'm going to be profitable. Now, Elon Musk decided it was a good idea to throttle the API, okay? So now, instead of being able to amass all of the sentiment that I would like over a 24-hour period, I instead have to be very particular about it, okay? So what I do then is I take a random sample of tweets over a 24-hour period, and instead of needing a mass amount, that is all of the tweets over a 24-hour period for a particular security, I am instead going to generate a sample average, okay? So I'm gonna generate a sample average. What do I know about a sample average? Boom, it has to follow a normal distribution. This allows me to conduct a hypothesis test on such a sentiment. So I take a random sample of tweets over a 24 hour period. I take a look at that and I say, okay, is this going to be positive? or negative. That's a hypothesis test I can do with a normal distribution. If we didn't know this, then I would be flying blind. I would be flying completely blind. I would have no idea whether or not that 
stock in the top quantile or bottom quantile based on the sentiment from the previous day was significant or not. Okay, because that random sample, if there's too much volatility, if the average is too low, all these things play into whether or not that should belong in that bucket. Okay. So hopefully this was a quick and dirty intro to the law of large numbers and central limit theorem. Hopefully the visualizations helped. Hopefully the practical example in trading helped solidify this idea. If you have any questions, please leave them below. Please send me an email if you, if you would like to. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, and I'll see you in the next one. It's good to be back. Good to be back.